Hi everyone, how are you doing? Uh, I'm Inigo San Jose, I'm a software engineer in Google in the Dataflow streaming team. And yeah, uh, we have a demo here. Uh, this is very simple. Hopefully it's very simple and hopefully I don't speak too fast and you get it all at the first try. Um, but as, as said before, uh, this uh, notebook is on, on the GitHub. You can try it later. You can try to follow along with me, but it, depending on the environment that you're using, you might need to do some things uh, before. I try to write them here. So if you span this, it's that you some of the things that uh, you will need to do, especially for the first half of, of, of the talk. The first half, I would just want to show you the portability and how the framework is unified so we can change runner uh, between the yeah, runner, the flow, fling, spark, whatever, very easily, uh, just by modifying some of the options on the configuration and how we can change from batch to streaming just uh, by changing some of the standard logic that comes from, from streaming, like adding a window, using an unbounded source, and whatnot. Again, if you want to follow along, uh, feel free to do that. I'm using, uh, as an environment, I'm using the Google Cloud Notebooks. So if you go um, to Dataflow, uh, Dataflow Workbench, it's here. Uh, the reason that I'm using that is because I wanted to avoid having to, again, install Apache Beam, authenticate to GCP and everything, and this makes everything easier for me. And for the second half, which is the main reason that I've, I've been using this environment, uh, you will need to have Java and Docker installed on the environment. This is because in the second half, we're going to um, talk a bit about cross language and Beam SQL. And since we're, uh, you already had a talk before about cross language, it uses uh, Docker containers. And in this case, I'm going to use uh, Java on, on the Docker container. Um, so if you're using this on Google uh, Labs, probably it's not going to work out of the box and you will need to do some tricky there. Yeah. Uh, so as I said, the, the idea of this talk is just to show you how to move from streaming to batch and from one runner to another. And to do that, um, I'm going to use the easiest example possible. I just want to show you the important thing here is for you to see the flexibility of BIM, uh, how, what the BIM model does. Um, I'm going to use the WordCamp. Uh, you already had talked yesterday with Israel, if I'm not mistaken, where you brought your work count uh, pipeline. So hopefully this is uh, basic for you too and you just can focus on, on, on the changes. Um, so before I start, uh, if I cough during the talk or if my voice is too weird, uh, I'm sorry, I live in Dublin and I don't have my raincoat with me and Dublin without a raincoat doesn't work very well. So this is the result of that. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it and forget about my raincoats. Uh, so let's import everything that we're going to use here. And in my case, I'm going to use this project on this bucket. Again, if you're using a different environment, you will need to authenticate and everything before running this. I want to change the level of login to error. The reason is I don't want um, every time that I run a cell to have some warnings there. I think they make it a little bit more ugly. So setting it to error, it makes me, it makes the, the notebook a little bit nicer. So I have split the department in three. The configuration, what we say to the runner that how to how to run the pipeline within the runner, then the business logic, which is going to be the actual work count, and then executing the pipeline. In the this first example, I'm going to use interactive runner, which is a runner specifically made for notebooks, and it gives us some extra visualization um, that direct runner doesn't have. So I run this cell. I don't need anything in the options in this particular case, so I just leave it as that. So now we have the work on the actual pipeline. Uh, what I'm going to, to read in this case for the work on is a play by Shakespeare called King Lear. Maybe you're familiar with it. And this is stored in a Google Cloud packet. Everyone should have access to it. It's a public, uh, a public file. So you can read out of the box. Um, so yeah, let's do read from text, which as you can imagine by the name is what we use to read from text. And now I need to actually make a work out, right? When we read from text, what we're actually reading is line by line uh, in parallel, of course, this is BIM, and we're reading lines on, on, on the file. So uh, we need to convert those lines into words. Since we're converting one single line, which is our element, into multiple words, we need a flag map. One too many, flag map. So this is the source. Um, and now we need to do the flat map. 
with the function that is already written there. Oops. What? And let's go through the function pretty quick. So using regexs, I'm splitting the text in in words. So this is the input element that is here. And yeah, I'm, I'm splitting into words and then I'm outputting, I'm not outputting the word by itself, I'm outputting a key value. The key being uh, the actual word and the value being a one. Uh, the reason that I'm outputting a key value is because probably you know from yesterday, we're going to use a count per key. And I don't really care about the value being a one, it could be in you as the best or in you as the worst or whatever you want to be. But normally for simplicity, just use one, it makes it look better. Uh, now that we have our words splitted, so every line now are key values uh, of the words that it has, we can do the count per key. Inigo, could you increase a bit the zoom? Just oh, absolutely, yeah. So I, I don't know to ask. I don't know if I'm is getting it... old, but yeah, I do have to. <laughs> yeah, is it is it better now? Yeah, it's better. One Thank more? you. No, I, I did it I... before, but I wasn't sure how big it was going to be. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think this one is fine. Yeah, sorry for that. Um, so yeah, now uh, as I was saying, we need to, now that we have the key values, so let's do counter key. What was doing. And this is our pipeline. If I didn't make any mistake, let's see. The pipeline hasn't run yet. This is like lazy execution and whatnot. Uh, we need a specific way of running the pipeline. In this case, since we're using interactive runner, we do IV.show and point to what we want to show. And now you will see this nice visualization that I was telling you about. If I didn't make any mistake, and here it is. We can see a table with the words and the and amount of times they appear. So King appeared 243 times, Lear 236 times, Dramat is just one, apparently. And we can even just order this, which is again, very nice. Okay, you knew this from yesterday. Let's now try to move this uh, from the interactive runner to uh, data flow runner. First thing we need to do, of course, change the interactive runner here to data flow runner. I guess this is not a surprise for anybody. Uh, now we actually need to modify the pile of options. We need to tell the runner, data flow, what are we using as, as settings. So the first thing is the project that I'm going to use, the GCP project, which is this one here. I also need a region for the Python to run in. So I'm going to use US Central One. And sorry for that. And I'm also going to need a temporary location. So like all the files are temporary files to be stored somewhere. So what I'm going to do is use the packet that I have before in the temporary folder. It's like this. I think it's the same. I'm also going to add a job name, which is going to be workout being called. 22, and this is pretty much it. I can add the number of workers that I want to, to use. If I want to use a thousand workers, I can do it. Probably I don't have quota, but I can do it if I want. Um, so yeah, now just modify the, the options. Let's run again this cell. So now the build variable gets the, the info. And let's get to the business logic. Do, you, do we need to change something? No. Nope. What we did before, works exactly the same. We don't need to change absolutely anything. Everything that we were doing here is going to work from interactive runner to data flow runner. What we need to change though, is the IV show. IV show is not going to make the cut for data flow runner because again, it's something specific for interactive runner. So we need p.run, p.run. And I'm going to store this in a variable called pipeline because now, that I run this, I have this other cell that it will give me a link to, to the pipeline in data flow. Again, if I didn't make any mistake. So hopefully this will be exactly the same as before, the same pipeline that we had in uh, interactive runner, but now running on data flow. And as you can see, work count being called it, uh, the project, the region, and it's exactly the same pipeline reading from uh, English. Probably this is too small to, to read. If you, just trust me that this is the same file that I was <laughs> uh, showing you before. Uh, so let's go back to to the um, to the notebook. Okay, we've been, we've seen from one runner to another. Let's try to move from from batch to a student. 
So the first thing we need to do is change this to work on streaming, for example. And we need to tell the file on auctions, and this is a streaming file. So we do a streaming. And this is pretty much it. No, we don't need to change anything else. OK. Uh, of course, since we're going to use streaming, we need something that is unbounded. And uh, King Lear is not going to work because it's bounded. It has an end. Because if not, everybody will be winning until now. Um, so we're going to use props as an unbounded source. Instead of doing read from text, we do read from pubs up, of course. No, the name is really intuitive. And we just write the topic uh, that I brought, set here. Uh, when we read from pubs up, we get reading uh, bytes. Unless we specify a, a, an option in, in the transform, we're going to be reading bytes. Since we want strings, we need to decode those. So do, let's do map, lambda b, decode. UTF eight. This is it. And lastly, since we are using streaming again, we need an aggregation. We need um, a way to tell data flow that we're going to cut our pipeline in, in terms of time or whatever we want. So we need a window. Because again, this is unbound. So window into window window. Windows, and I'm going to use 30 seconds, it doesn't matter. And this is pretty much it. As you can see, uh, I only needed to change the source. The count is exactly the same as before. So from patch to streaming, we only needed to add the standard logic that comes from using streaming. The actual, the key of the pipeline, which is the word count, remains exactly the same. The plot map is going to work exactly the same. The count per keys want to work exactly the same. Now let's run the pipeline. And if I didn't do any mistake again, we should have our pipeline running. Let's check. No questions so far, right? Yeah. So it looks like I'm speaking as fast as the other time. Uh, this will get the graph there, and then we can see it here. We can see the bit from pubs up, the map, the window. So this is the thing that it changed from before, from the bats example. And now the flat map and count key, which is our, these two boxes, are exactly the same. If we have time at the end, I will show you that this is actually working. But since we need uh, some time for the workers to pop up and whatnot, um, let's leave it like this and continue with the uh, with one of Um so yeah, is there a question so far? I don't think so, right? I think we're good. Uh, again, as I said before, if you are trying to do this tomorrow uh, or today later <laughs> uh, by yourself, the solution of everything are here. Um, again, hopefully without any mistakes, uh, but it should work uh, for you. Now let's move to Beam SQL. We've been seeing the portability and the how you see fine. Now let's see the um, the expansion service. Uh, so as, a, uh, as an example of, of cross language, I'm going to use the SQL transform uh, because it's nice to show you also Beam SQL. So it's uh, two by one, right? Um, again, as I said before, if you are trying this at home, you are going to need both Docker and Java. So prepare the environment before running this. Um, as you probably know from the previous talk, when you use cross language, there are some parts of the pipeline that are embedded in, in, in a Docker container in a different language that's the original pipeline. So that's what we're going to see. And in order to actually see that we're using uh, Java, what I'm going to do is set in the, the log level to info. This next line here, uh, this next function here, is just a way for me to show you the rows in a nice way instead of like as a beam row. Um, object, this should make the, the format a little bit better. So now let's get into the actual pipeline. Now it's written, everything is written. So um, and I don't make any mistakes because if not, I probably would have made some. Uh, the idea of this pipeline is just I'm going to create uh, a set of random countries from all the, um, the continents with the population. And I want to aggregate by the continent, using being SQL. The first thing I'm going to do is create those elements here. 
And then I'm going to convert those elements, which are dictionaries, into uh, beam rows, which is a specific type of, of beam. In order to do that, I just need to say, this is the name of the column, country, and I need to pass the value with the type. So country is a string, so it was string, population is float, so float, and the same with continent. Now the query that we're going to use, very simple, select continent, sum in the population, and aggregating by the continent. Uh, the from, so now should be the table, is going to be pre collection, because we have a pre collection on this side. Once we have our beam rows, we just do SQL transform, pointing to our query and a simple map to format, uh, run this, this function here to format the, the rows. Well, you're going to see lots of red, but that's fine, don't worry about it. See, lots of red. Um, we can see here, beam SQL, expansion service, if we go a little bit down, you should see a little bit more, expansion service, expansion service, external Java, and I think there's Java somewhere, Python there. So we're actually also using Python. And here it is, Java 8, uh, here, Java 8, 2.37. So as you can see, uh, we were using both languages and we can see the result here. So America, the countries that were randomly selected for America had a population of 43 million and so on. And since I know you were going to ask, well, yes, we can do joins also with MSQL. I know that you were going to ask, so I prepared an example for that. I want to change the error level back to error because I don't think you want to keep seeing this red thing over here. Um, again, very simple example, just, just want to show you um, how to do the join in a very simple way. I created three elements that have a name and a country and three uh, ages, uh, yeah, four ages, sorry, have like the, the name and, and the age of the people. And I'm going to do like a join of those two pre collections. Similar as the sample before, I'm creating the elements and making them a row, the same with the age pre collection. And now I have the query. So I set the select, the name for the ages, the country, um, and the age from the age table. Uh, we go from eight and um, full join the country on the name. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not using P collection here. In the previous example, as a table, I was using P collection. Now for this particular join, and I, I get to name the things. The reason that I get to name the tables, it's because I'm using a dictionary as an input here. Before, and at the, whoop, at the left of the pipe here, there was a P collection, and now I have a dictionary which values are a P collection. And the name of the tables are going to be the, um, the keys of the, of the dictionary. So age, age, country, country. So let's run this. It takes some time. Maybe I should have run it before and explain it later, but it should be OK. Uh, oh, in case that you're curious, the language that uh, BMSQL uses by default is Apache Calcite, Calcite, Calcite. I don't know how it's pronounced, but it's a specific language from, from Apache. Uh, yeah, it uses that under the, under the hood. Did you want to read the documentation? So yeah, we see the result is bright. So John, Italy 11, John, Italy 11, Ma Maria, China 22, Maria, China 22, and yeah, it works. And again, since I knew you were going to ask, um, I made an example for, for streaming. Uh, in this case, what I'm going to use is a public topic uh, that it's about uh, riots in New York. And the elements of, of that topic, the messages that are being published, look like this. So you have like a right ID, which is an identifier for the ride, point, latitude, longitude, and we're not using that, timestamp of, the, of that, that, that particular message, the method reading, how much is at that particular point, how much it was incremented from the previous message with the same ID, the right status, so it can be in route, which is when the taxi is actually moving, like going to a destination, um, pick up, picking up someone, and drop up, dropping up someone. And passenger count, the number of passengers in the in the um, in the taxi at the point. Again, this is a rather simple pipeline, but uh, hopefully you get the hang of it. 
So yeah, the topic, now we have the options for data flow, as you can see here. Now, instead of using a beam row, what I'm going to use is a name table. The reason is because when running it in data flow, there are some issues with the coders and so on, and using the name tables and register them make these problems go away. Uh, but it's pretty much the same. We just create the name tuple. <coughs> Sorry. Um, with the meter reading as a float, passenger count as an int, and drive status as a string. Uh, now the query that we're going to have, again, super simple, counting the total rights, the total cost, the average cost, total passengers, average passengers, reading from a key collection, and just filtering by this right side. So it's a very simple SQL pipe. We have this function over here that what it makes, uh, what it does is uh, convert dictionaries into uh, uh, right rows uh, name tuples. The reason that I have to duplicate the code here from here is because since I'm using these notebooks, uh, there are some issues with the pickling. And if I don't duplicate the code, in, in even the imports, uh, sometimes you get some errors um, that they are not uh, being defined. So that's a way to solve this. Um, yeah, and then I just have put this uh, as this, this name tuple right row. And the pattern, the beam pattern is super simple. Uh, reading from PubSub, converting it into a dictionary. Then we make it a row, and we need to hint that the flow of the type, in this case, the name tuple right row. So we have it here uh, with output types and this one. We are a window because we're doing an aggregation. And that's just after that, just the SQL transform, making it nice and logging it because it's data flow and the print will not work. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's see that this is working. And while it does so, I'm going to show you one pipeline that I ran yesterday, I think it was, that it was actually working and you can see, uh, you can see the logs. Uh, This is the same pattern as before, reading dictionary to row, window, the SQL transform. I'm making it nice. And this is it. If you get to see it, this might be a little bit small. No, it's better. So you can see the total rights was 247. This was the total cost, average cost, and so on. Um, so I guess this is it. Uh, I'm going to show you this just to see to show you that I'm lying, this is working. Yeah, and this is it. Um, yeah, I think I'm done. Hopefully you don't have too many questions here. Uh, hopefully I wasn't speaking too fast. No, you were actually speaking slower yeah. than usual. <laughs> Thank you. I that. tried to do so. <laughs> so um, let me see. If we have any questions, we have a question about the join, but you already answered that. Um, you were actually answering questions beforehand. If there was a join available, how we could do it with streaming. I don't <laughs> know. Where are the questions? I don't, I, don't, I don't see them in Slack or in the chat here. In the Q and A, okay. I already answered them, but, but yeah, somewhere about uh, if the repo was available, and I already answered those. In the chat, I got a, a direct one. Uh, that's what I was saying. That, that's why you didn't have it about the join. Let me see if we have any others, or I don't know if everybody is ready to finish things up and try the workbook on their own. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, yeah, as I said, like if you're trying this at home, um, the solutions of everything should be here and it's not particularly hard to, to do so. so yeah. Before we let you go, I mean, this ties up to, yeah, the, what we were seeing earlier today on the multi-language pipeline. So yeah, that was a very theoretical session. <laughs> that we had earlier today. So yeah, it's good to see how it tights up. Uh, 
now that we're seeing it with codes. Yes, yeah. the idea of the dog was to yeah, so you that even though the nice the theory is super nice, in practice it's also very nice too. <laughs> okay, well, I think that's it, Inigo. Thank you so much, and thanks everybody for joining us. And we'll see you in the next session of BIM College. Thank you.